Well, so this is some scary stuff. Uh, I want to get into it, but first, just real quick, I want to thank you guys for your patience. Uh, I am taking care of an ailing family member uh, and uh, trying to improve the channel at the same time, so uh, a lot of my time is very thin. I did, uh, just to show you guys, I'm improving the channel. A Yeti. So that should improve the sound quality. Uh, I did get some complaints about the crackling, so hopefully this will solve the sound issue and the sound quality. Uh, if the sound quality is bad, then it's probably because I don't know how to use the Yeti yet. So let's get into this because this is really scary stuff here. UNC campus police use geofencing tech to monitor anti-racism protesters. Now, geofencing technology is pretty invasive. Uh, it takes the phones of people coming into an area, uh, take, uh, locks onto their geo uh, location services on the phone, and it tracks your social media posts and a few other things. And in fact, they don't tell us everything that it tracks. So let's get into this. Police use the technology to collect info from a protest at a Confederate statue at the UNC campus known as Silent Sam. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. State investigators and college police use a controversial tracking technology called geofencing to collect personal information from the cell, phone, uh, cell phones of anti-racism protesters at the University of North Carolina after being tipped off by the FBI according to documents obtained by NBC News via Freedom of Information request. So basically, uh, NBC got a, uh, a Freedom of Information request, which then they had to release the fact that, yes, they are using this technology called geofencing. They weren't going to tell anybody. Of course they weren't. The documents also show that the university signed a three-year, $73,500 contract for the use of the geofencing in 2016, a contract that ran through the end of October, this October. So, what is geofencing? What does it do? Well, here we go. Geofencing. It captures the social media posts of people entering a specific area. The technology locates any cell phones that cross into the area by locking onto their geolocation systems and then records social media posts and sometimes other data from the phones. Now, imagine this. Imagine there's a protest going over here and you're just walking through and they have cordoned off this geofencing area and you're just walking through well guess what your information gets recorded too and they don't even tell you all the information that is recorded that's classified or secret or proprietary depending on who you talk to they say that it collects you know your social media posts and other data well what's the other data it's kind of scary stuff what's to limit them to geofencing What's, uh, what's to say they don't geofence the entire United States and track everybody? What's to say they're not doing it already? Hell, we don't know. They're not going to tell us if they are. They have the technology to do it. Logic would say they're doing it. If it exists to be able to do it, the government will probably do it. Let's continue. Versions of geofencing have been used in politics, including by the Trump re-election campaign and the Texas Democrat Party, and by retailers who send ads touting sales and products to any nearby cell phones. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Technology, a cursing and a bless and a leash. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this, is, this is scary stuff, man. This is really scary stuff that they can just kind of get that kind of information. So imagine next a store uh, gets your geotag location. They find your social media posts and they track them. And now they're targeting just influxing you with targeted ads well studies have shown that when you influx people with a certain thing unconsciously they tend to buy that thing so you're essentially being influenced really uh there's a reason that there's no such thing as bad publicity it's because you stick out in the head the more you stick out in someone's head the more likely you are to be familiar and they're more likely to either vote for you or buy that product or whatever is familiar to them whether it's consciously familiar or unconsciously familiar studies have proven that at UNN, unc however internal university emails obtained by nbc news show that officials use the technology at least once to monitor activities activists who showed up for a protest at a campus confederate memorial known as silent sam a statue of a gun-wielding rebel soldier on saturday 
August 12, 2017, white supremacists met in Charlottesville, Virginia for a planned march to protest the proposed removal of a Robert E. Lee statue from City Park. Now, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. White supremacists. Well, okay. It's kind of hyperbolic. I mean, they were they were rebels. Were the white supremacists in there? Yeah, they're, they're, they're most likely were, but they weren't all that way. Some of them were just historians who didn't want it, but yeah, there were there, but not all of them were. It was a mix of people. A white supremacist drove his car into a counter-protester, killing her. Yes, that was, uh, that was tragic. Uh, the incident raised concerns among law enforcement officers in other cities, including Chapel Hill, about potential violence at other protests. <laughs> At just before 1 p.m. the next day, on Sunday, an FBI agent sent uh, the chief of the UNC campus police an email that said, I'm sure you're already tracking, but I wanted to make sure, and mentioned that anti-racist protesters were expected to gather at the Silent Sam at 7 p.m. for a Charlottesville solidarity action. So it's almost expected. He emailed them saying, I'm sure you're already tracking everybody, but you know, I just wanted to make sure that you were. Yes. Those who trade liberty for security deserve neither. Freedom and liberty is not security. Freedom and liberty is constantly fighting for your rights and constantly fighting for your liberties. That's what makes freedom so hard. Freedom is not easy. Freedom is difficult. Freedom is fought for. It's not supposed to be easy. If you are secure, how are you free? Is it freedom to let someone get into your phone? You don't know who they are, and they're human beings too. What's to say an officer isn't going to use any of this information for nefarious purposes? Here's the thing. Everything out there is going to be abused at some place, some point, some time. Human nature. Anything that one human is capable of doing, we are all capable of doing. So what's to say that someone isn't going to take this information and find someone's house and then find when they're out of town based upon their social media posts and rob their place or any number of other things, maybe stalk someone, I don't know, but if it's there, it's going to be abused. This is some pretty scary stuff. Geofence is being monitored and real-time distribution list established with Orange County LE and Isaac GJTTF, wrote Cornegie. Okay, I don't know what any of that means. Someone put in the comment what all that means. A bunch of legal jargon. Anyways, wrote Cornegie, referencing law enforcement from the surrounding county, the State Bureau of Investigations, Information Sharing, and Analysts... Oh, Jesus, that is a long... The State Bureau of Investigations, Information Sharing, and Analysts Center... Good Lord, the... So that's the S-B-I-I-S-A-C. Sabicac. The Sabicac. And the Local Joint Terrorism Task Force. This strikes me as something from, like... An episode of Black Mirror, you know. Sipicac is monitoring all citizens. All citizens caught out of their homes past 9 p.m. will... <laughs> oh. oh, my Lord. They're linking analysis on social media. So they don't just take them, they analyze it. And, and I mean, ah, wow. This is crazy to think that they have this kind of technology... And that they're using it, but I mean, it's only good if you use it, so I mean, of course they're going to use it. But, Jesus, man. This was crazy. The purchase or, let's see. But according to contract information obtained via the Freedom of Information request, the university had begun paying a Vermont-based company called Social Sentinel Incorporated. Social Sentinel Incorporated. That's a hell of a title. Social Sentinel Incorporated, huh? $73,500 near a year earlier to use software that allowed them to pull social media posts from geographic area. And what's to say they're not pulling it from the entire campus all the time? You're just roaming around your campus and they're just collecting information, collecting information, collecting information. And then that is that information secure? Do they store it? 
do they not store it? Do they say they're not storing it? And they do store it, kind of like other things that people said that they don't store, but they later found out they do. The purchase order from the company says the data Social Sentinel provided to the school was given to them by one or more social media services or third-party data providers. So they, they, they don't know. Oh, they don't know. This is some scary stuff, guys. I mean, think about it. Geofencing, well, who decides where the fence begins and where the fence ends? And when the fence is turned on and when the fence isn't turned on? And who decides what information is used and how the information is used? And how secure is the information? And do they store the information? What do they do if some hacker gets in there and steals all these people's information? Because you can do a lot with some of the social media posts. You really can. It's like the metadata thing when they say, oh, it's just metadata, it's just metadata. Oh, no, you can do a lot with metadata. Imagine getting the social media posts of anybody you want in the world. What could you do with it? You could probably sell it. You could probably use it for nefarious purposes. Could it be used for good? Yeah, sure, I could see possibly it being used for good. But still, I'd rather have freedom. I'll fight for my security. And I'll fight for my freedom. I don't need Uncle Sam in there to make me secure. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll do this. I just, I find it baffling that this isn't bigger news. I mean, really, it's just become mainstay. It's become normal. It's become, yeah, all right. People are going to hear this and be like, yeah, and? And? They're stealing your information without your permission on, on your cell phone. And the cell phone is a very personal thing. We have everything in our lives on there, our bank accounts, everything. And I know they're saying they're just saying they're collecting social media posts, but if they have the capability of collecting social media posts and locking onto your phone's geo-tracking services and using it, what else are they doing? What else are they collecting? They're not going to tell you everything. They never will. But let me know your opinion. Am I, am I wrong? Should you just be like, dude, Paramount, Paramount, Cyclops, dude, chill, chill. It's okay. They can have my information. In fact, here, I'll give them my phone. They can plug it in. They can have all my information. In fact, they should get everybody's information. Or do you believe that this is wrong? That they shouldn't be intruding on people's privacy like that? That's pretty crazy. Or are you middle of road? Leave a comment below telling me where you stand on this and if you're okay with this. To me, this seems kind of scary and like, I mean, George Orwell, you know, area. Black Mirror, Twilight Zone. That's all I got on this one. I, I thank you guys for your time, and I thank you guys for your patience. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm still in the process of trying to improve the channel. But at the same time, uh, life is life, and family is family. And uh, yeah. Anyways, I love you guys. Take it easy.